Chicken breasts have to be cooked perfectly to be good, and that is why I'm cooking 10 of them to see when the ideal time is to salt chicken breasts. Salting your meat in advance is called dry brining, and it's known to help the proteins relax and retain more moisture and flavor during cooking. But do you get the maximum benefit if you salt them an hour before, four hours, or even a day in advance? I'm going to test that. I weighed and salted a chicken breast before putting it in the fridge starting at 48 hours in advance and repeated that process at different times over the next two days. I would have loved to have cooked them on the kettle, but I had to keep things as even as possible and that is where gas grills are king. I salted one chicken breast right on the grill, then they were all cooked over medium heat, flipped, pulled at 160 degrees Fahrenheit, and rested for two minutes before going in a numbered bag to keep them straight. And don't forget that one that was salted after cooking. You are going to want to see that taste test. So all of the chicken breasts are fully cooked. I cooked them all to the exact same temperature, which should help avoid some of the extra variables. So if you overcook one, it's definitely going to make a difference in the final product. Anybody who's overcooked a chicken breast knows that. And I weighed each chicken breast so that way I would know how much weight it lost from the beginning, right before the cook, and finally at the end. And while the weights are interesting, what I care about the most is the way that it tastes and the final product. And so I'm doing a head-to-head -head tournament, bracket style, where I'm going to compare two different chicken breasts, decide who moves on to be the next winner. And in order to do that, I made sure that it was double blind. So I randomized it by each chicken breast that came off. That was the order that it went into the bag. And Mrs. GTE, she's inside right now, assembling the bracket so that way it's random for her. She's gonna know which number she's handing me, but I won't know which number, and she doesn't know which number represents which chicken breast and how long it was salted in the fridge. That way we can remove all the bias. Let's do the first test. This one is definitely the loser. It's dry. I'm going with the right hand. Round two. That's the best one so far. Oh, that's a lie. This one's a winner, but this one would have beaten any of them from the first round. The thing is, I can tell by looking at this, it has a darker ring on the outside, and that means that it was one of the ones that sat in the fridge a little bit longer. So this one, I don't even really have to taste this, I bet, because this one looks dry and this one looks pretty moist, but let's give it a go anyway. And before long, I was on a roll and able to quickly determine which chicken should move forward in the tournament. But it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. One of the chicken breasts stood out. And in hindsight, I probably should have used less salt on that one. This one is super salty on the outside and dry in the middle. So clearly, this one is the winner. I finished the first round. We are down to the final four, so these should both be really good. Oops. It's close, but the left one was definitely more tender and juicy. Not a big difference between these two either. I'm going to give this one a head, just by a little bit, and into the final. All right, so this one is down to the main event, the final. One of these ones will be crowned the winner. Let's find out. Both of these absolutely deserve to be in the final, but this one eked it out and won the overall championship. At this point, you already know who the winner is, but I don't, so I'm gonna jump back and do a little tabulation, compare it to the before and after weights, and see who we can crown as a winner so you know when to salt your meat. And looking at the pre- and post-cooked weights, the chicken that was salted for at least 16 hours retained about 25% more moisture, and that means more juiciness. The chickens in the final absolutely surprised me, but there's one thing that we learned, and that is chicken that salts for less than an hour gets absolutely no benefit. And after salting 10 different chicken breasts, I learned that it takes about an hour for that salt to soak into the meat, and that way it doesn't come off while you're cooking it. So when should you salt your chicken? 24 hours before is ideal, but anywhere between an hour to 24 hours before will give you pretty good results. If you like this video, check out this one where I compare wet brining, dry brining, and marinating your chicken breasts.